car. Hello everybody and welcome back to Greg's Carport. I know it's been a while since we were putting out some videos for you guys to enjoy, um, but we got a new project. Uh, we just got it home the other day. Tell you real quick how the project came to be. My boss at work, uh, she was talking about this car that she has that just sits alongside of her garage. She doesn't drive it anymore. It's been sitting there for about a year and a half. I asked her about the car, got some information about it, what she might want for it, what she thought was wrong with it. And so we made a deal. And so what I bought was a 2006 Ford Explorer XLT and it does have four wheel drive. So as I just mentioned to you, this is a 2006 Ford Explorer. It's an XLT model. This would be the fourth generation of the Explorer that was made. They made the fourth generation from 2006 to 2010. Let's give it a little walk around. You guys can see what it looks like, the current condition. Uh, and then after we do a walk around, we can open it up and see what we got inside. And then we'll let you know what we plan on doing with it. Anyway, as you can see, first of all, you're going to notice our headlights definitely need to be replaced. Our fog lights are pretty bad off as well. Um, I'll get into those parts here towards the end of the video. But as you can see, the paint itself, this is what is called Pueblo Gold. Uh, the paint color name. I think it's going to shine up pretty good. The problem is just it's totally covered with dust and dirt from setting outside for so long. And I think with a good wash and uh, buffing of the, the clear coat, I think it's going to turn around and I think it's going to look good. As you can see, we don't have a whole lot of scratches or dents, dings. It still has the factory wheels. Uh, these would be 16 inch wheels. Uh, the tires are the factory size tires. Those are 235 70 16s. Good enough for me. Um, it does have the, a lot of you guys who are familiar with Fords are familiar with this. This is the little combination pad that you can use to, if you don't have your keys, you can use the combination and open up the door this way. You can also lock the door from here. And uh, in another video, we're going to show you if you don't know the code, we're going to show you some hints as to how you can find the code without having to go to the dealership. The side trim here, the paint itself is good. The side trim definitely needs some cleaning up. As you can see here, my cameraman, my son behind the camera there, he put a little bit of the uh, of the stuff here on this trim and you can see that it does darken it down. This trim was never black to begin with. It would have been the dark gray like you see here. All the glass is good. Uh, it does have factory tinting here uh, in the back. It has the factory running boards on it. Tail lights are in good condition. Those aren't faded out like sometimes. It, I'm guessing that this car spent most of its life facing the sun instead of the sun coming here on the back. Anyway, the taillights are in good condition. Uh, we have a wiper on the rear hatch. This is very similar to the Expedition that you guys saw us uh, take a look at here not too long ago, where the glass will actually open up by itself. And once we come back to the back here to show you what's inside, we can show how, you, how that works. It does have a class two hitch on it. You're not going to tow very much with a class two hitch, but you could uh, do a small uh, uh, boat or, you know, like uh, uh, some kind of like a watercraft, but you're not going to be pulling a, a big old Airstream behind this thing. It does have four wheel drive, as we mentioned. Uh, again, this side here, taillights in good condition, does have parking sensors in it. As we come up on this side, gas door is on this side. I think some of you know who have a lot of cars, you know, you're always trying to remember what side the gas door is on without actually sneaking a peek at your gas gauge to see where the arrow points. Uh, again, the side trim needs work, but it's all here. It's not cracked. It's not broken. Another wheel in good shape. These don't have a lot of road rash on them. They just need to be cleaned up. I also have an idea of how we might make these wheels look a little more modern than they do. Uh, you can see here, looking down the side, doesn't even really have door dings in it. Now, 
I probably said that too early because as most of you know, once you finally wash a car, that's when the dents and the dings show up. It does have uh, electric mirrors, both sides. Again, factory radio antenna up here on front. Otherwise, everything's in good shape except for these headlights, which are just totally baked and cooked. Otherwise, I think the outside of it is in good condition. One of the reasons I wanted to get it. All right, so what we've done is we've moved around to the back of the Explorer. I wanted to go ahead and show you how the glass opens up, the whole tailgate itself opens up. I also wanted to point out a couple of things. One thing that kind of bothers me about this, and it seems to be a factory thing, believe it or not, but the tailpipe on these things, to me, it just hangs down kind of low. Maybe it's just me, but it just seems like where the body line is on the car, it just seems strange that that tailpipe hangs down the way it does. I don't know if we can tuck it up somehow. Who knows? Just one of those little things that bugs me. Anyway, the other thing, any of you that live uh, Central Valley of California, I don't know what it is about license plates around here, but you would swear somebody came by and sandblasted your license plates. I don't know why it is. It happens a lot up here. But anyway, so we have the hatch uh, glass, and then we have the hatch itself. Again, like I remember I told you on the expedition that we looked at, the glass itself opens up by itself, so you don't always have to open up the whole piece. And what you have is right down here, actually on the glass, it says right here, glass release with an arrow on it. So you just come down here, and you're going to find a little rubber button feeling thing. You just press it and it opens it up and there's the glass itself as you can see it looks like it's going to need some struts some cartridges put on this thing to hold it into place but again this the idea behind this is you don't have to open up the whole hatch what if you're back up against something and you can't raise it up this way you can still open this up throw your groceries in throw whatever you went in the dog the cat whatever you got to put in there and you can just do it with the glass. I haven't tested the windshield wiper back here. I'm assuming it works. So we'll just leave it at that for now. And it just pushes back into place. The whole gate itself, the hatch back here, there's a handle here right underneath the Ford badge. You just pull it like you would kind of a door handle and it comes up. The struts on this one are a little bit better as you can see. Now, the car does need to be cleaned. The lady that I bought this from, very nice lady, but she's a smoker, she drinks lots of coffee. So there's residue of both inside the car. It does need a good cleaning. We haven't cleaned it yet, but it's gonna need a good detailing inside and out as you already can see. This particular uh, car does not have a third row seat. That was an option that you could get in these Explorers. This one just happens to have the front seats and then the rear seat. It doesn't have the third row seat. So it does have uh, carpeting on here, which is nice. It just needs to be cleaned, vacuumed up. It's got little hooks here for help, extra tie downs. We do have a serpentine belt. So uh, considering that this one's in pretty good shape, I'm not sure if that means that the one that's on the engine is in bad shape, but we do have a serpentine belt. We have a couple of floor mats. Underneath here, we have the jack for the car. And then also here, there's a little tab that you pull up and there's a little bolt, a little nut in here. And you would lower the tire, which is underneath the car. So. If you turn it counterclockwise, the tire will come down from underneath the car. And then there's a little, a little clip that goes inside the rim. You move that away, you pull the car or the tire out. And when you put the other tire back in, the little clip goes inside. Then you turn it clockwise and it pulls the tire back up. Now, chances are by the time you've changed the tire and you're already mad and upset and everything else, chances are you're probably just gonna throw it in the back. But but anyway, that's how that works. And then, since it doesn't have the third row seat, it does have this one up here where the third row seat would have been. But all it is really now is storage. You could throw some stuff down in there, some, uh, you know, some snacks, 
Fritos, some bugles, some, you know, whatever you want in there. That would, that would be where the third row seat would have been. And these seats here, the rear seats do fold down. So you would have this whole flat area if you needed it. It does also have this little compartment over here. And it currently has a pair of jumper cables in it, which is always good to have in any car that you have. Everything is clean. It, I mean, everything is in good shape. It just needs to be cleaned, is all. So that takes care of that. And I think that pretty much wraps up this very back end. What we'll do now is we'll move up to the second doors, the rear doors, and we'll go ahead and give that second seat a check. So now we've moved into the center section of the Explorer. This is the se uh, second row seat. Again, I already told you it doesn't have a third row. So this is the second row seat. Now, it does have a cloth interior. This is an XLT model, but in all honesty, it's kind of the base XLT model with four wheel drive. So it doesn't have a sunroof. It doesn't have a uh, leather interior, which is it's okay. This is this, I, I bought this for kind of a, a banging around car. So it's all good. But anyway, so in the back, you, the, you actually have room for five people, two in the front, three here in the back. And these seats, we have a 60, 40 uh, rear seat and they do fold down, they fold forward. As you can see, the seats themselves, again, are in good condition. There's lots of dog hair in here that we got to get rid of. But to be honest, they just need a good cleaning is what they really need. But the seats themselves, they're not torn. They're not, uh, you know, they're not sunbaked uh, with all the little stress cracks and stuff in them. The seats are good. Little pockets here in the back. Here in the center, we have two cup holders here which would be for probably your rear passengers because there's also two up in the front. We have two vents here for the rear passengers. This here would turn off and turn on the vent in case you were getting too cold. And down here we have a 12 volt connection so you can charge up your phone. Um, these are some pieces here that we've taken off up front. I'll show you that when we get there. Otherwise it's in good shape. You can see down here the carpet's in good shape, it just needs to be cleaned. And how these seats work is you fold this forward, then there's a handle over here. They fold down and then this comes forward like this. Now they don't fold completely flat, but to be honest with you, if you're just trying to haul something that's not that big, it'll fit in here perfectly with these seats folded down. So that's a good thing to, to know about. Folds back into place, push that back up like that. We do have three seat belts for the rear seats. We do have an overhead light here. Obviously it's on now because the door is open, but it also does have lights. So your rear passengers, if someone's back here looking at something, they could turn those on when it's dark so they can see. It also does have a third row light for the cargo area back here that I don't think I showed you when we were back in there. That one's currently off. But it does work. You can see there that it does work. It does have, of course, hangers up here. So you can hang up some clothes if you need be. The door panels themselves, as you can see, just like on that one, are in good condition. The only thing that we've kind of come to notice on this, I don't really understand the design of the door handle on these cars because you have to actually reach your hand down to get to the door handle where you're kind of used to grabbing up here. And then the door to open the door is up here. So it's just, it's just kind of awkward getting into the, or when you get in to pull the door closed, because it feels like you're reaching way down to grab the door handle. And the weight of the door then seems kind of off to me, at least it does to me. These doors here do make a lot of uh, kind of a cracking, creakily noise when they open. But that's just because these doors probably haven't been opened in who knows how long. They just, they need some grease. They need some uh, something in there just to loosen them up a little bit. And I think they'll be fine. Back in here, our headliner's in good shape. Can't complain. Again, like I said in the back, it needs to be cleaned. Let's go take a look at the front. All right, so here we are at the, uh, the front of the Explorer in the driver's seat in the passenger seat. So this is where most of the wear can be found in this car. Again, it definitely needs to be cleaned. 
um, the seals and everything here, even though they're in good condition, they're not broken, they're not, they're not cracked, but they're just showing the age. I mean, the car is 16 years old. So it's just showing its age just needs to be cleaned up a little bit like the seats. Uh, but again, the seats themselves, they need to be cleaned, but they're actually in good. They're actually in good condition and they actually still have good support and whatnot in them. Now, as you can see on the steering wheel, definitely needs to be cleaned. Steering wheel does have tilt wheel. We do have cruise control. We do have intermittent wipers. We do have uh, driving lights, fog lights on this vehicle. Uh, it does, since it's the first year of the fourth generation, the instrument cluster is a little bit better, a little bit different. Uh, we do have uh, temp outdoor temperature, stuff like that showing in here. I do like that it has the center console for the gear shift. I think it does make the car look a little sportier. We do have a center console here, so you can put stuff into it. Keep all your hidden stuff. We have another 12 volt down here. Uh, for cell phones and such Emergency brake over here gas pedal brake pedal you guys all know all this stuff a uh, window controls We do have electric mirrors on both sides for here air conditioning vents uh, dimmer for the inside lights we do have lighted uh, Visors and mirrors on both sides now one thing you might notice because of the wind we do have some separation here of our headliner now the fix would be to loosen up the sides to actually get up into it and then they make that glue that spray glue that you can spray and then we can probably tighten that up and you can see here where it's come loose here at the front as well that's just got something we're gonna have to glue up the best we can and hope for the best so in the center overhead console it's a lot like the uh, what you would find in the expedition you have this here where you could put probably like a garage door opener. Maybe it might fit up in there. This second one here, the handy sunglasses case. Up here you have like this thing here, which I'm not exactly sure what that was designed to have put in there. But you also then have uh, lights here for, I guess it doesn't show up because I've got the door open itself. Again, we have visor mirror it does have an aftermarket radio in it uh, head unit here uh, vents here's the four-wheel drive buttons we got auto high and low traction control uh, air conditioning controls down here now one thing that I should bring to your attention is when we went to get this uh, it was completely dead the de battery was dead and so the actuator what happens is cars know when you step on the brake before you can move the gear shift. So if the battery is completely dead, there's no power to send a signal to the little gizmo that's in here. And so you can't shift it out of park. Now there is a little hole down here in the bottom of the cup holders that allows you to have access to the little metal tab that holds this in place. And you can so manually, you can shift it out of park into neutral so that you can move it if you have to. What we're doing in this video is I'm giving you an overview of this. The problem with this is a lot of the parts that we've ordered, they are still on back order. We're having a big problem trying to get parts that we need for this. I'm trying to go with OEM parts as much as I can, unless they cost a fortune. Um, I'm not brand loyal, but I just think if we can get the parts and they're not that much more than the, uh, the, you know, the, the knockoff brands, then why not go with the OEM if we can? But everything is on back order these days. We can get the simple stuff, but some of the other things. Such as, so, one thing we found. Some of you may not know what this is, but when we finally got this car up and running, uh, what happened is the air conditioner wouldn't work. And I'll explain that to you when we get up front and I'll show you the engine. Once we finally got it working, we realized that this thing down here, which a lot of you are familiar with, it's what changes your air conditioning from the floor to the vents in the floor to the defroster, only that kind of stuff. So what it does is this plugs in basically to this switch here. And then this turns, there's a blend door underneath and that blend door moves and that's what changes what air goes where. 
well, this is bad, so we got to get one of these. Uh, but the air conditioner does work. We just need to get uh, an extra charge into it. We got to get this actuator fixed. You can see down here we do have glove box, good size glove box. Again, it's in good condition. It's not falling off. To be honest, the worst thing about the front here is this headliner that has to get fixed uh, and a good cleaning. It just needs to be cleaned. We're missing some pieces here, but we have all of these parts. Uh, my other son took some of this stuff off in order to get to some of these things that we had to get to. The one thing that I wanted to point out is, and Jacob can show you in a, in a minute, these little things here, these little tabs, that I th they must go in the back someplace. I found this one up here up front. Whoever used to have this car had uh, had drilled a hole here in the dash. And like I said, Jacob can show you that picture in a minute. Anyway, they drilled a hole in the dash. I don't know if they had a switch for extra uh, fog lights or driving lights or whatever the case may be. But I found this in the back and it's the same color. So I think what we can do is we can just use that and we can glue that in place of that hole so it's the same color as the interior and that way we don't have a hole in our dash so the problem is if i use this for that then most likely i probably left a gaping hole someplace else that i'll have to figure out but maybe i can figure out actually what these things these little things are called and i'm sure you can probably still order them one thing that we did get uh is a cigarette how can i go wrong buying this car right i got a cigarette anyway Let's go ahead and check underneath the hood. You can see what this came with, what we've done to it so far, what it still needs. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, fire it up and we'll take it for a little drive. So now we're back at the front. We're gonna get inside here so you can see the engine compartment of this thing. Wanted to point out a couple of things. I already talked about this, but I wanted to bring it to your attention again. These headlights, there's nothing that makes your car look older than when the headlights get like this. Now I know you can clean them. I know you can. But I found a source for OEM headlights that they're not that expensive and it'll make it look so much better. Now, another idea that I'm, I'm running through this head of mine, the grill on the XLT looked like this. Now, the Eddie Bauer edition, the grill was very similar, but there was two side snorkels here on the side. So the center section was similar, but then there was an opening here and an opening here. I'm thinking about getting one. You can pick them up, they're not that expensive. And I'm thinking about getting one because to be honest, they make the car look a little bit more modern than this particular grill does. Just an idea, just a thought. All right, let's open this thing up. What the, why won't that? Okay, let me grab something. The main problem, the main problem that this car had was it sat alongside this lady's house. Mice got to it. We live out here in the Central Valley up in the hills. Squirrels and mice are a main uh, problem here when it comes to cars. They'll get down in here, they'll get into the wiring. So what they did was, you can see here, they got to three of our spark plug wires and they just totally chewed them up so the lady that i bought this from she said oh it'll run but it runs really bad well it was only running on three cylinders so that explains why it was running really bad anyway back to what we were talking about so this is the 4.0 it's a v6 engine it has 210 horsepower it's connected to i think it's a five speed transmission with overdrive. Uh, the engine itself has 135,000 miles on it. It actually runs really good, doesn't smoke. Uh, so I'm pretty impressed with the engine so far. Um, I'm not planning on making this into a, a race car or anything like that. 210 horsepower just for this thing that's gonna be on the pavement 99% of the time will be fine. So my other son, took because we haven't been able to get a uh, set of wires yet 
he took some wires that we had in the garage and he took and put them together good enough so that we could get spark to those other three. One of the other things that the mice got too is there's a water temperature sensor that sits right down in here. They chewed all these wires away and so that would definitely throw a check engine light. My son repinned it with some wires and then he just ran it up in here back into the loom which works fine. The battery when we got it was completely dead. This is a battery uh, that doesn't actually fit correctly. We took it out of one of the other cars. It really should have the post on this side, but we'll pick up another battery here soon. We also have some wires down here. I can't see them right now. There are some other bare wires in the back. Let me see if I can see them. Yeah, if you bring the camera over here, you can see right down in here, we still have a few bare wires back in here that the mice had gotten to. Uh, that we're probably just going to try to use some uh, some liquid wire, you know, to put over the uh, the wires themselves and see if we can mend it up that way. We had this running the other day and it's been hot here. And it ran for a good half hour and it didn't overheat. We couldn't get the air conditioner to come on and we couldn't exactly figure out why. So what turns out is once we fix the uh, temperature uh, sensor, the air conditioner clicked on. So obviously that sensor has to be connected. So the computer says, okay, the engine's not overheating. I'll turn the air conditioner on. Uh, so the air conditioner does work. It needs to be recharged and we need to get that blend door fixed. What we're planning on doing here with the engine, obviously a new wire set. We're going to put in new plugs. Uh, we're going to get a new battery for it. Uh, oil filter, oil change. Uh, we ordered up a fuel filter. It has an inline fuel filter that goes there on the frame of it. Uh, get that changed out. So we're just going to do some basic maintenance to bring it up to date. Um, so here in California, so we can get it in, we can get it smogged, get it registered and all that good stuff. So I think so far that pretty much shows you what we got. Let's get in. We'll take it for a little drive here up the street. Uh, you can see that it actually does run and move on its own power. And then I'll just give you a little summary of what's coming up. All right, so we're inside. We got it fired up. It runs good. It idles good. To be honest, we've already put the uh, code reader on it, and it's already ready for California smog. So it did good. Uh, we don't have any check engine lights. The only thing we have is we have a low tire pressure uh, light, oil change light. Oh, I also wanted to tell you, we did check the oil in here, and it looks like it was just recently changed, well, before it got parked. The oil itself looks really good. So let's go ahead. We don't need to put this in four-wheel drive where she's parked. We're just up here in this area here, but let's head down here and get over the curb. There we go. And we'll just take it for a little drive here down the road, just so you guys can actually see that it actually drives. Uh, it doesn't make any weird noises. The transmission itself shifts really good, really nice, smooth shifts. Doesn't seem to be any weird noises. The thing I noticed the other day when I was driving this was I was really surprised as to actually how quiet the interior is. It's all plastic, just like most new cars are, but there's not all these creaks and shakes and rattles. A lot of this stuff is the stuff that's down here in the center council. But it's actually, if I shut up for a second, you'll see that it's actually a pretty car, quiet car to ride in. We're just going to take it down here, then we'll turn around, and then we're actually going to go park it back at uh, the carport, which was actually the channel's name. That's just a seatbelt warning. Don't everyone, don't everyone panic. It's just I have a tendency not to wear my seatbelt here in the in the local neighborhood. So let's go ahead and turn this thing around, and we'll head back to the house. Like I said, it only has 210 horsepower, but it moves right along. I mean, like I said, you're not going to win any races in this thing, but it was never designed for that to begin with. It was designed to 
uh, get you to basically just the grocery store uh, when it's snowy or raining or whatever the case may be. And a lot of people just like them because they feel safer uh, when they're in them, which makes sense. It's a, it's a bigger vehicle. Uh, one thing that we want to do, and once we get this thing parked, I'll do a little summary and uh, give you an idea what we actually want to do because now that we have uh, the Explorer and we have an Expedition, which are basically the same generation because uh, this is a 2006 and the Expedition is a 2005. Yeah, we'll take it back down here to the carport. Try to do this without lighting anything on fire. And back here. And we'll set it right here underneath the tree. All right, so now what we'll do, because that shouldn't ding anymore now that it's in park. But now what I'll do is I'll tell you what, our, what we want to do is if you look at our videos from the past, you're going to see that we did a walk around, a drive and whatnot of the 2005 uh, Ford Expedition. It's four wheel drive just like this is. So one of the plans we have is once we got this up, cleaned up and running, we're going to do we're going to do a side by side comparison of these cars. So we're going to set them side by side. You're going to see the height difference. You're going to see, we'll get inside. We'll both set inside. You can see how much room's inside of them. We'll see, like I said, the height off the ground. We'll set them side by side, back to back, front to front. And that way you guys will get a good idea. Uh, if you're looking to get something like this, it'll give you a good idea. Do I need an Expedition or do, can I get away with an Explorer? Anyway, that introduced you to this project here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I ask that you subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, most of all, subscribe so we can get our channel up and running so we can get more up here for you guys. Don't worry, the Ranchero is still here, the Gran Torino is still here, and for you Chevy guys, just so you guys know, we this last week we picked up a 2002 uh, Chevy Avalanche with a Z71 package. It definitely needs to be cleaned up. It definitely will have to figure out how to even get this thing started. But it might be a good project for you Chevy fans out there. But until next time, please subscribe and we'll see you then.